when I was in Fort Lauderdale, uh, that conversation was led by Sue and Ben Eisenberg. Sue Eisenberg, they were both alumni. Uh, Sue Eisenberg has, was president of the Alumni Association. She worked on development for many decades. Uh, this is a long-standing challenge for her. And there isn't just one reason. Uh, there are four, five, or six reasons that come up. I'd be happy to go into them. Don't you think people assume that we have plenty of money because we own the press and don't yeah, you think I that think that was one still, misconception? No, I think there it's I still a misconception. Because in American philanthropy, it's perception. perception. Well, people, perception. Still, well, people, people still perceive that. Well, people still don't sure. understand. But, but, but everybody knows that Princeton is full of rich, okay? And they raise huge amounts of money. In American philanthropy, the unfortunate paradox, the, the, the really the really depressing fact, is a vast majority of American philanthropy goes from wealthy individuals to wealthy institutions. Yes. People give more to wealthy institutions than they give to less those are the people who got jobs on Wall Street well, and have plenty of money. But, but Jeff, uh, I, I, don't and, think, and I, think I don't think there's any validity to the claim that people didn't give to Cooper because they thought it was rich. Because the history of philanthropy shows exactly the opposite. And I no, had, but I, when I, I mean by rich. With a Cooper but, alumnus, but, I, but I think George, who's given George. MIT a lot of money and given Cooper Union a small amount of money. And I said, why haven't you given Cooper you know, as much or more as you're giving MIT? We went to Cooper, and his response was, you know, this is MIT, and this is Cooper. There's some very, very strange calibrations that people make. It's a very complicated issue, but certainly one thing that has been common is that Cooper Union has greatly overestimated how much it was raised. It hasn't just been setting goals to, to get by. It has been setting uh, fundraising goals based on what's needed to keep it free. And it's turned out it's never been able to raise those goals. And I go back and look at the fundraising letters and all previous administrations, that was the pitch. So it was done. I mean, the 1990s, uh, and, and Jay Islin raised a lot of money for public television. He started Channel 13. And he knew all of the civic uh, leaders and, and donors in New York City. Uh, was unable to get even remotely close, even though every pitch was if you look before that, if you look back to, to uh, Lacey, President Lacey, before that President White, before that President Humphrey, uh, and and each time they fell short woeful, dramatically, but clearly and had to end up taking the money down from the endowment, selling our property, borrowing the money, and, we sold and now we are at the end of the road, and we're looking at insolvency. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, Do you think the faculty would make concessions in order to keep the school free? They've already they said that they would. They they've, would. they've all said that they would. I'm not, but that's not. Well, I don't they think have actually, you know, uh, uh, I've heard that, but but we haven't received any proposals, and it's not. But I it's not a one-way street. Have you proposed to them what that would look like? Because I think that they well, are all big proponents of it. That's what I would do. That's yes, and, but it's only part of it. Yes. I can't. I can't. In, in, in union negotiations, you can only negotiate in a formal negotiation session. So, sure. But, and and the individuals around that table are designated. I'm actually not at the formal. Uh, I have informal conversations with the motion with with. Uh, union leaders, but we're not permitted to discuss what's called terms and conditions of employment. So, for me to bring to the table some kind of proposal for some kind of dramatic cut would simply be perceived as union busting, and we would not, you know, get any cooperation. We have the, the four million dollar cut uh, was disproportionately administrative. The president's office took a 27 percent cut. The, the administrative areas took huge cuts. In spite of the fact that since 1996 there's been no increase in administrative headcount at all, and how can you stand here and say that when you you've been actually employing new people for the development office and you keep we keep hearing of hirings and from the administration side? Then why would you ask for concessions from the faculty if, when you say huge amounts of? Uh, uh, cuts in the administrative side, we can see that actually the, the percentage is not clear, but yeah, actually if you can clarify that percentage, that would be great. What is the percentage of the budget that the administration gets out of, uh, out of, out of well, the yearly budget? How much does the administration get? on how you count it. I mean, if you count uh, benefits, uh, right, right now, uh, Cooper Union 
uh, has a budgeting system in which the quote unquote budget of a school, for example, doesn't include uh, a number of costs. It doesn't include the benefits, it doesn't include the, the operating costs, the cost of the facility, insurance, etc., etc. So uh, if you actually attribute those costs to each school, uh, our uh, uh, administrative costs are much, much lower than that. And I've, I've, we, no, no, I didn't ask you yeah. to relate to others. I asked you what is the percentage that the administration is getting within the Cooper Union. I don't want you to actually... If we use, but, but if we use a national standard based on auditor... Let's forget standards. I just no, want to know... Would no, 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 you let me answer the question for you, okay? Yeah, but they're relating, you're always relating to other institutions, and we want to know specifically... Because within there are many the methodologies. Union. I'm saying if you use this methodology that's used in the audited financial statements of all institutions that's required by law, Cooper Union's administrative overhead is about 35%. Most other institutions are about 50%. So we are actually one of the lowest in administrative. We published this with the Expense Reduction Task Force a year and a half ago. Uh, there is no other institution, uh, uh, either of our size, small size or selectivity, that has an administrative overhead as well as ours. Berea College, which is one of the few remaining free private colleges, has an administrative overhead of 50%. Um, and I know it's very popular to say it's the administration. It's very popular to say it's this building, it's, it's that. Uh, that doesn't reflect the complexity of the truth. The truth is actually extremely complex. And one has to learn it to, to, to well, understand the complexity. It's kind of, but it's, it, it's, it's a lot simpler to think about from the donor side, whether I'm an alumni or an outside donor, to see that if multiple um, bad decisions have been made within the institution and 35% of, of, of the money that I'm going to give is going to go to those people who keep making those kinds of decisions, I'm not going to give money. Period. How do you know what? I mean, I'm the one who's Because I'd rather see an institution like, that really... Which donors are you talking about? Because I'm talking about I raised $5 million yesterday at breakfast. Which donors are you talking about? I need to remember today. Well, the same donors, the same getting, donors that you... The None of them have said that, focus, You're focus. making it up. None of them have we said need, that. The we same need to donors. know. Are you guys want to solve, come up with a plan to move forward? We can't agree to what you would like. What you would like us to agree to is to postpone for a year the decision on tuition. I'm not clear on why we can't do that. Because we can't. It escalates we, the problem. We, we can't. Can. What we can do is we can raise the money and not charge tuition on any given year. That I'm prepared to do. And, and I'd say join me in raising the money. We can raise 12 million each year, but then each year we can watch the not have tuition. I'm, that, I'm absolutely I'm there telling with. you, I will come to a conclusion by December 1st of whether or not it's possible. So I don't see the difference. What you're saying is we would like you to come to that conclusion in a year. I don't need a year to come to that conclusion. The deadlines are good. I've been in business a long time. The most effective thing is deadlines. You know how many deals I've done on December 31st? And the reason was because tax laws changed. Somebody had to do close, sell a building by December 31st in order to take advantage. Who knows what? But I've never had a deal that had to close December 31st that didn't close. I've had plenty of deals that had to close on a day that the lawyers postponed for a week, they postponed for months. Deadlines are good. We don't need a deadline of May 15th. December 1st is a good enough deadline that will put pressure on the faculty, it will put pressure on me, it will put pressure on everyone to figure this out. But why didn't you mention the administration? We don't want to put pressure on the administration to open up its channel. With you. But well, well let, let's agree. I'm, let's. I would, I would. Can we agree on something? Sure. If you look at what's been happening and the separation that there is between the community and the administration, there's a big gap, and we want to close that gap. But the only way to close that gap is to really put pressure on the administration and open up those if channels. That's the solution. Then we'll put pressure on it. But that, I, I guarantee you, you'll see every number affect that 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 every every single number that goes into running a school, we will disclose. Well, we can disclose salaries of all of our people. Right, I mean, but, but you can lump it together. Right. Uh, you just lump right. it together. And those secrets. I'm not here to play games. I have better things to do with my time. I'm 70 years old. I'm not with you. I'm, I have plenty on my 70, how many? 70. I'll be 71 on July 6th. It's depressing enough. 
Can you trust me? I wish the best years of my life were spent at Rensselaer in college. I was just wondering, uh, John Shed, the you were saying the five reasons why I only don't give. I like I just want to know what those are. I'm willing to talk about it because I'm, I'm sharing lots of conversations around the country. But I'm willing to talk about it if you're willing to hear me as telling you, giving you a truthful answer to a question. Because you're not going to agree with me. Is that, is that fair enough? Sure. Uh, I'm recounting from thousands of conversations, many roundtables like this we had in Chicago and Florida. Uh, one is. Uh, Cooper Union was a very rigorous experience. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect. Uh, it changed my life, but it was not a warm experience. I hear that a lot. And I can tell you as a cognitive neuroscientist, if you were to boil down into two dimensions, uh, how people perceive each other, how people perceive groups of people, uh, ethnic groups, it comes down to two dimensions, respect, which is a measure of competence and warmth, which is an emotional thing. But you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because I have friends at Rensselaer who don't give a penny to Rensselaer. And when I ask them, why don't you give any money to Rensselaer, that's exactly what they say. Yeah. They, so say that, they say I hated it. That because we, you had to study hard. Commonly. You know what I mean? Now, I didn't hate it because I was a lousy student, so I, didn't, I wasn't trying to get A's. I was trying to get yeah. C's. And I accomplished exactly that. I graduated with a 196 Q. And the only reason I graduated, you know what, you know what, the, the, because the, I didn't think, because I wasn't supposed to graduate, because you have to get off probation to graduate. And I was trying to talk a teacher into giving me, raising my grades, and I ran into the dean outside, and he said to me, what are you doing here? And I, and I said, I'm trying to get someone to raise my grades so I can graduate. I invested in the kind of level of outreach that other institutions have, so Cooper, alumnus ends up being married to an alumnus of another institution, that person who has all these brochures and there are events and receptions and so on, they feel a lot more, uh, the outreach is much more substantial and much warmer. Plus colleges with sports teams have that. Reunions, sports have teams, that, other have that type of thing. But incidentally, the sale of Green Camp, which was the beginning of, symptomatic of the fact that this problem was back then, Eliminated one of the few warm aspects. Of well, can we speak the, examples then? Like the, earlier, I said putting pressure on the administration, and the perfect example is the, the last email we've been getting, which is part of this re outreach or whatever you're calling it. And it, it was um, uh, 10 questions, 10 answers. I don't know if you read that. But if you read it, by the end of it, it says, Thanks, but no thanks. It says, You're an alumni, you've given 25%. Thank you, but no thank you. You don't need to really help. And the, the way it says it is you cannot solve the issue by giving money. We cannot, we, any new programs will not help the issue. The only way we can solve the issue is by charging tuition. Now, if that's, that's said on that, on, let's, can we, do you want, do you have the time to read it together? I actually, it, I actually want to go together. through what I asked him. First. Yeah, we're only on two reasons. They but the, the kind of outreach that you're speaking about and the warmth is not there in the ways you're doing things. The way you're doing things is actually separating the community. And if you're actually trying to solve the issues, I think a community that works together would go a long way. So, Fabrizio, I, 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 I respect what you're saying. However, I have raised billions of dollars at other institutions and my wife has as well. And what you find is, even though any, any mailing you send out, some people will say, well, you should have sent it this way rather than that way. Why did you do it this way? But they give. The difference is uh, at the other institutions, in spite of their criticism, they give. In fact, uh, Jesse's in my experience has been people call up and they come in and they say, how can I help? Uh, there, there is a fundamental issue here, which is one of the other reasons I was going to bring up, there isn't a culture of philanthropy, there isn't an expectation of philanthropy, and that's historical, and it will change. I know it's, it will change with the current body of students who go out there and see it as a responsibility to give back. Uh, that has not been part of Cooper's uh, uh, culture, and so um, people pick at these little things. People don't give because the letter said certain things in a certain way. They give 
and they shouldn't be even have to be asked to give. They give, they should give, and at other institutions they do because they feel that this has been a transformational experience for them. But they've been given a lot. They may not like the administration. They may not like the trustees, but they give. And, and you're, that's a fundamental. You're contradicting difference. yourself. So can, can we finish? Uh, he's just. Representing there are other talking. reasons, but you know the uh, look. I have a call with the president of Stanford. I'm Would you mind come back? What? That'd be great too. Um, or sending us an email. I I do want to get through the five points, but if you have to go, then I want to respect that as well. Let me, let me try one more thing, and I'll step and take it from, from another floor. Um, there's one line that I hear from people that kind of shocked me when I first heard it, but I then heard it more and more often. Um, um, more from sort of people with conservative views and uh, liberal views, and it's, if you don't charge for something, you don't value it as much. Uh, I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I'm still be reporting, I get that again and then again and again. Uh, and there are many engineering alumni who actually have uh, urged us to charge something because they believe that if you charge something, people value it. So, um, and uh, Karen Pritzker, who is a billionaire who I've been soliciting for, she has been uh, giving some to Cooper. I hope there will be more there. She's, uh, I'm, I'm going to be candid, uh, very put off by the occupation. Um, very liberal left wing in her politics otherwise. She started a school in, in, uh, in Cambodia uh, for the, the children and grandchildren orphaned by the uh, Vietnam War, which spread into Cambodia some time back. And her view was they started the school, they insist that if every family gives something, however little, because it's her view that if they don't, they don't value it. Now, I'm not saying I agree with you. Ask me what people say. That's one of the things. And as far as Karen Pritzker is concerned, who's capable of helping Cooper Union a lot, uh, there isn't. A, a, you know, that is that is one of her beliefs. And uh, I would say at this point, uh, if you don't mind, let me go up and, and make my call, conference call. And uh, I'll stay. I can get another Thank you. Uh, if it's a, if the call is, you know, 20 minutes or less, I'd love to come back for another 10 or 15 minutes, and then I have a three o'clock, actually, uh, event. So, okay. Uh, I just also, I wanted to ask, to clarify, because I don't necessarily see the distinction between what you're proposing and what we also, we want to do. Um, like, we're planning to fundraise, to buy time, to buy a class. Which would which would equate to like buying time to solve this in like a different way than this, like maybe fundraising over here. So I don't, I just don't see where there's a difference between like what you're suggesting, which is a committee that you would head, maybe right, and, right. and but plus our counter fundraising. But we're part of it because we're not going. The board is not going to do it. So do what? But Jeff, but what you're before proposing. you. No, but before you so, think in like what Taylor's saying is that we have a, I'm just saying, a campaign which is not let's what Let's compromise saying. and do the right, look, you got to compromise. Look at poor Obama and these idiots in Washington, Republicans who don't want to compromise. But right? a compromise is usually something that's achieved from both but sides and not one. You're you, coming here and you're I'm asking us I'm telling you, I, on your side, I am. I think the school should remain tuition free. I don't know how to get there, but I can tell you I'm smart enough to to figure it out if there's a way. And I don't need till May. But, right? which, so, but what Taylor's saying is that I'm not saying that we even need until May. I'm saying that we are speaking with members of the community and with faculty and alumni. And you have to like, you have to have a little bit of trust when I tell you that like the, the way so you're, that you're pitching you, this is that I, it I might have, not I work have, for that long. I have trust. But you got to have trust also. No, and I'm, but I've so said, I'm since saying, since I'm telling you, I, you very, I can't sell. Uh, I think it's a, it's a matter of building. The answer to your question, let me just finish. Sure. I totally disagree with that. People either want to give money, enjoy giving money, or they don't. Plain and simple. I think it's a gene. I really enjoy giving money. Anyone who asks me for money, I'll always write a check. The 
if it's someone I know or if I think it's a good cause. I've t I can tell you, I've talked to people that are billionaires who've turned me down for $1,000. Billionaires. Because when they write that check for $1,000, it's painful for them. For me, when I write the check for $1,000, it's a pleasure. I, I say, you know, like I just got a, I, I just, I, I backed a, a film that was done about eight, eight people in Seattle to show how the recession has affected the average, you know, Americans, but people, you know, you know what it's like to have to tell your children that the gas company came and turned off the electric and the heat. I mean, you got to tell children that they're going to be living in a house with no electric. I mean, it's, it's horrible, but it, it, I enjoy, so I, I gave, you know, I, I did the film and then I saw the people, I gave $25,000 to the producer, I said, distribute the money any way you see fit. I just got to thank you yesterday for, for one of them. But, That's I mean, worth more than the $25,000. I think this was a great example of him saying one thing and then doing another. Jamshed is an educator. Let me explain what Jamshed is. Jamshed is an educator. That's his expertise. He would like to see the school become a better quality institution. Okay? That's how his view. He's an educator. Whether we should have hired an educator for this job, I question that in hindsight. But, but at the time we hired him, we didn't know this crisis was there. He's the one who said to us, when, we, when I first met him the first time, he said, are you aware that the school is going broke? And when I look back now, I say to myself, what, what were we thinking when we went out and borrowed $175 million, knowing it would cost $10 million a year to service the debt, knowing that we were operating in a deficit? Well, what the hell were we thinking? Is this contract going to be renewed? It just started, right? It's only a five-year contract. I don't think that's anybody's discussed. I mean, I'm just, I don't think he's the problem, to be honest with you. But he's well, also not someone who can answer your questions the way maybe you want. He's just, well, he's, he, yeah, no he said it warmth, he warmth was important, and, and then he says it doesn't matter what we write or how we write things. They're really either give or, or not give. So that's a contradiction right away. Very there. simple example. But How are we supposed to trust someone he's who doing lies? Something to him. that no one did before. He's trying to get big gifts because he comes from a, from a, a college that got big gifts. So he's going back to the same people who wrote big checks for I think Tufts. Is that where he comes? He's going back to the same who have no allegiance to the school at all. But he knows they wrote some big gifts, and he's asking them to, to be, help him out on a personal level. But is, and he's getting some. Yeah. But I mean, I, I understand that on like some capacity, but isn't that also like a problem? Because like on one hand, like yeah, Dom Shed is an educator, and I understand that. But there's also multiple ways of educating, right? So like he has his own language and agenda tied to how I'm he. I'm telling you injured. now, if Dom Shed is the problem, I'll solve that. I don't think he's the problem. I can tell you. He didn't want me to come here until today, because it's gotten to, you know what I mean? I offered two months ago to come here. I said, let me meet with these kids, let me try to make a deal. And, and it was, nah, it's, you know, it's not, let, we, I'll handle it, Mark and I will handle it, you know, this and that. You know Mark has never come here? I have Once. We may not like see eye to eye on him being a problem, but like I'm not a numbers guy, right? But I do understand on some like very base level that like time and money are <laughs> are inextricable, right? So like if Jamshed, in my like personal view, cannot understand the language or vision of this school, and he's going to these different uh, entities asking for money in a specific way that is not tied to the vision of the school, then that is a problem that is financial. The board, the board is shifting. Last, I, I resigned from it, okay? And Borkowski, I said, I'm giving a million dollars and I'm done. And so I said to him, I don't enjoy going to the meeting because I have to listen to this bullshit, you know? I says, and I gotta read, I gotta get these emails from the parents and I feel like answering them and saying, I agree with you, you know, but I, but you know, I don't wanna screw, you know, I don't wanna. So Mike Borkowski. Wait, so are you resigned now? No, so Borkowski said to me, do me a favor, come to one more board meeting, the one that just happened. So I said, okay, but I, it's a waste of time. <clears throat> At that board meeting, the, the mood shifted, dramatically shifted. 
Okay? Mark and Jackie Chan were very much opposed to having students on the board. Okay? I stood up and I made an impassioned speech. I said, this is ridiculous. Why, what do we have to hide? What? Why don't we, why don't we, you know, why don't we have students on the board? Uh, we need, if they feel that we're incompetent or, or we've made a mess of things, what's, what's, what's so terrible? So, to my surprise, the board said, yeah, Jeff's right. We think we should have students on the board. Most of the time, the board will go along with the leadership. And I'm not throwing him under the bus, because I won't throw him. You're talking about Don Tutter, Mark? John Mark, forget Mark. Mark's term is up. So Mark is non non -fabulous. I think Mark is, you know, that's why I said, I said when, when what's his name, Lawrence called me and said, can I announce your gift? I said, if you think you want to, it's okay for me. I said, but make sure you announce that Mark's term is up. And make sure you announce that a search committee has been formed because I think Mark is part of the problem. He just hasn't communicated, you know, and he, you know, sometimes you relate to, to, to people and sometimes you don't. Um, and, and I don't even know, you know, you know I, I don't even, Mark's Mark, you know, you do your best. When, when you get on these boards, you're not doing it because you're getting paid, you know what I mean? You, you're not getting paid. So sitting here or sitting at a board meeting is, is you know, like, you know, like, and you have to listen to people who don't know what they're talking about half the time. Um, well, that's also but we should solve this. There's no, there, you don't want to spend the summer here. And, and I can't do what you want. I can't sell it. I think I can sell the concept of, of, of board representation. And I think it should be three people. Um, and I think there should be, other than maybe certain sensitive things. Well, you say I can't sell what you want. What if I can't go back to the board and say, I met with these kids today, and they'll agree that they'll call off the occupation if we agree to, def to delay charging tuition for a year. They're going to say, no, Jeff, we're not doing that. What's, well, I have a question. Oh, oh, sorry, no, you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's fine, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I, first of all, I wanted to point out that um, the tone of the conversation we're having in this room right now is extremely different than the one before, which was about um, sort of um, a competition of whose hypothetical situations were valid and whose were not. That, to me, was extremely disturbing. Um, and uh, now that we can actually uh, speak in terms of what can be done and in terms of specifics, um, the, the first thing I wanted to point out is that it's um, I mean, it is, it is a, a problematic situation, as Devon pointed out, um, with, the, uh, with the people that John Chen is speaking to for large donations, but it's good to know that he has that value for the school. Um, what I would request is that um, that doesn't um, inappropriately counter with the administrative responsibility that he has as a president. Yeah. Um, to me, that's like the, the, other, the other situation that you're describing is a sort of financial benefit um, that he has. I mean, and let's face it, like at Tufts, um, at Tufts, Tufts is a school that is a lot closer to the way he was describing Princeton yeah. than it is to the way Cooper is. So, I mean, he's also um, learning. And I think he's still in a learning situation when it comes to soliciting donors for Cooper's intrinsic purpose. Um, what I'm curious about, and the question that I asked uh, about half an hour ago is actually when the speculative modeling was going on. When John Chet talks, I basically see pictures of charts and lines that you know, I don't have access to. Yeah, you do. Um, he he, does. he yeah. um, it, it seems that like things were happening with sliders and we're seeing like, okay, well, what can we do here? And so my question was, like, there seems to be a misunderstanding of exactly how much translatable capital the Cooper's mission contains. I mean, like, um, I, I think it's kind of sad that uh, that that voice has been, um, I mean, it's mostly, it, it, I mean, I'm sorry to point fingers, but it is mostly John Shad and Mark. Um, they're trying to restrict that to an ideological item. So I'm trying to say to you, let's get away from John Shad and Mark. 
right. me and Borkowski take a shot at it. I think that's what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, no, we're no, all I couldn't say that in front of him. Exactly. No, I know, that's we all know, but I'm saying it's because we're the two guys. You could bring you guys, guys into these meetings so you could hear so, it, because it's, so, it's not just a student not, thing. We can't, I, can't, I can't undo, I can't right. go back. But you understand that we can't, we're not, we couldn't give you an answer. If you don't think I feel bad, I feel terrible. I say to myself, I said, I really screwed this up. Peter Cooper had a vision. And we, we, blew, we screwed it up. We didn't do it on purpose. But I'm saying when you talk to us about like the I don't want to let Oliver finish too. But I'm saying when you talk about like these this compromise and these ideas in this room, even if all of the students participating in this occupation were here to talk to you right now, we couldn't give you an answer because it's not just us. Like I get it's something it. we would have but to coordinate with all it. of the other parts that are I working it. on it. So it's like if we can really open the sign of communication from this meeting with you and Mike and bring that back to the group that we're talking to. I think we can find a compromise, like you're saying. I don't know that it will be exactly what you think, and it probably won't be exactly what I've been thinking, but it will be something. But I just want to let all, I'm just saying, like, we can't give you a decision. Like, I couldn't say, like, I, yes. I agree. You I wasn't that? expecting you. Okay. And, and there are fundamental... I was expecting you to say what you just said, that you've <laughs> got to go back. I, I, I haven't... I mean, he called me last night, Judge. I was at the Yankee game with my grandson. And he said, could you do me a favor? I said, why? He said, I'm going to go one last shot at the kids. And you told me you offered two months ago to meet with them. And would you come with me? So I said, I'll, I don't think, I, I, I got to change the things around. Yeah. So, so then I found, I told my assistant, move this stuff around. I got to go. Because I have some meetings at Wilson. Um, so this is like a, la you know, for me, him to bring me here is like an admission on, on his part. This, his biggest concern was that I'm going to throw him under the bus, and I won't, because it's not my way to do business. Would that mean like not... trying to get rid of him? What? Would that mean? What when I say throw him under the bus, what he's saying is that I'm going to come back and say this is John Shit's fault. None of us. And he should go. And I think none of us hold him responsible for anything. It's besides other than her, yeah. yeah. Other than these past years, no. Exactly. Yeah. But I just want to, I like, I, I hear him say that to me every time I'm in a room with I'm him. I'm listening to he, him. He, he, he doesn't, he you know, I, I hear No one blames him for the, the deficit. I know he, he doesn't get that. He, people, people do not blame he's, he's him for that. He's an educator. I get that. And, you know, I think that he looks, you know, in, in his previous job, his job was to hire deans and make sure that he hired the best teachers and make sure that, you know what I mean? I mean that that would be what an educator an educator does. And I mean, my argument my argument with him my argument I look at a school this way. Is it is it the teachers that make the school or is it the students that make the school? I believe it's the students that make the school. Because I don't care where you go. I went to Rensselaer, I had some good teachers, I had some terrible teachers. I would have to believe you probably had but everybody I, I, I would add to that to say that it's not either or, it's the dynamic between the oh, students. But you know what I'm right. saying. But, 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 but to, that, to that degree, in terms of strategy, in terms of strategy, I think what, what was mentioned that Jamshed is going, uh, getting these big gifts and they're almost like personal, personal, personal favors from, from people who, who he um, got money from before. That is going for the individuals rather than building a culture that's going to that's gonna really sustain the Cooper Union in the future. And I think the culture change that needs to happen here is that we all have a stake in the school and we all need to help. But going, in, like, going the way in which uh, a benevolent dictator goes and gets a couple people to give money and says, okay, I've just raised you $5 million, you have to listen to me now. That's not the way to go. I think a cultural change. I don't is think the, that that's anybody's intention. But so to do that, but to do that, you need to like, yeah, raising money is the goal, but raising money in a way that nurtures the community, nurtures a culture of giving, and that's what Peter Cooper. That's what made Peter Cooper so well, successful. Well, I, in, I, in, I disagree with Dan because I think that one of the reasons people didn't give was they thought we that Chrysler Building paid all the bills. Now, I could be wrong. He's talking to more people than I am. No, I, didn't go, I didn't go to Cooper Union. No, but check that. I said there were four or five reasons. You know, that is I get that. I mean, I get, you know. I mean, we could sell the Chrysler building and make the school free for the next 25 years, and then the school would close. You know what I mean? Because why sell out the future? Because the Chrysler building in, in 2018, between the tax equivalency and the rent, is going to throw off $52 million. So if I sold the building, 
for $800 million, we owe 175, so we'd have $600 million left. We wouldn't get the, the rent, but we'd have $600 million. Right, so and we're we not proposing that. I like understand, that. but I'm just saying, there are solutions, <laughs> but they're the wrong solutions. You know what I mean? There are solutions that, that hey, we did that. We sold some of the real estate here, you know? Now I wish we didn't because the real estate's worth three times what we sold it for. But yeah, but the conversation and the dynamic right now is that if the administration does a good thing, then it can tell everyone that this is the, this is how that well, they deserve the, the, while, the power. While you, while you were gone, this young lady said what I thought she. But she did think that she thought that there was room for compromise, um, and that that they would like to find. How long will that take? Is the, do you have a more concrete proposal? Because I still am a little bit not clear on like what. I a, I'm just telling you, uh, my proposal is very is simple. Right? Mike and I, would, the board would give us the go ahead and, and the backing and say, okay, you guys take this problem. You guys, if you guys think you can solve it, you go ahead. You have to December 1st to come back here with a solution that would be a no tuition solution. And at the same time, we would simultaneously come up with a plan to allow for board representation, student representation on the board, and that whatever presentation would be given would give, be given simultaneously to the board and to the students, either by having student representation on the board, or we could do it in a different form if you wanted to say we should have faculty and student but not opening it up to the general public, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the There's also something you can do in the meantime, and this is, this is where I was going um, when I was talking about, I think, uh, that we haven't made as much use of um, the actual um, financial, the, the translatable value of the mission, which is that in, in the meantime, if you have until December 1st to formulate a strategy, um, why don't you just start a fundraising account? I mean, like... We are. We are. We're, we're about to... I'm about to specify. So... Um, <laughs> The, the issue is that when, when I was saying again that like the, the value has been I think under um, underestimated um, right now the entire constituency of the Cooper Union, which are people that no longer go here or people that are freshmen up here, students, faculty, um, no, nobody is more acutely aware of not only the crisis that the school is in but also the workings of the school and what goes on day to day. Then I think I've seen at least the five years that I. have um, and to me, that's a really wonderful thing that should be maintained, but it also becomes uh, a source of value. Because now all of these people are invested in the future of the school in the way that they were not. Because, I mean, I don't need, I don't think that, like, what, why people want to give needs to be rationalized in terms of some sort of, like, behavioral psychology theory, because it doesn't get put into practice cleanly. But, if you say, well, we have until December 1st to raise as much money as we can to sponsor as many students as we can, which is which But is I don't think that's going to be the plan. I think that's no, part of the plan. It's but riskless because there's got to be some the concessions on the part of the faculty. There's got to be, right. maybe there's some concessions on the part of the administration. Maybe right. there's, but I mean, I'm saying you know, like, there's a lot of different ideas out there. With regards to alum, now that everybody is in this position of, let's say, trauma, um, I think there is much more. There, there is much more of an interest to be able to get back to the school. There's not an official channel to do that. I mean, whether or not you want to run that through an independent party or you want to do that straight out of the school, that's something that should be discussed. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's certainly possible that we could come up with a recommendation that says, yeah. okay, the faculty have agreed to this, subject to our being able to raise X amount of dollars by May, May, whatever it is. You know, I, there's a lot of different ways. I think. I think one component has to be like fundraising. I don't think there's any question, but another component has to be cost cutting. You know. speaking, speaking of the Cooper Union, um, I, I think the community has not been really mobilized to solve the issue as of now. In the way that the administration is, is working as of now, it's very divisive and it's 
professionalizing all these things that could be done by professionals who have graduated from the Cooper Union, who would do it pro bono, or who would do it in, and that would really unite the Cooper Union more. Because the way that things are, are being passed from the administration out to the rest of the community is, is almost as if we were clients of the administration. And once I, someone speaks to me as a customer, then it's a different relationship that I have with that, with that institution. Now, what's important is that we feel included within the institution so that you feel like, you know what, this is what the institution needs right now, this is what I will do because I'm included in the institution. But if I'm separated from the institution because all these professionals from somewhere else tell me it's a certain way and it's completely different from my experience at the institution, then I'm not, I'm gonna say, you know what, someone else took over it, I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, but I don't think there's anything that I, I, from my perspective, I have no, no reason not to be inclusive. I'm not looking to not be inclusive. Right. Everybody's gotta be on the same page. Right. Otherwise, Everyone. everybody, we're all going down. We can charge tuition, but if everybody, if you know, if half or some percentage of the of the students are you know are pissed off, they're not going to give. They're going to. So that doesn't help. Anybody. Well, what this We're, is right now is a bunch of um, Cooper students and community members trying to really solve the issue, right. who have not been mobilized by the administration. They've been mobilized by themselves because they feel included in this institution. And we want to grow that group, and that group is growing. However, to have to have a like a, a state of war between the administration and the community it does not help any correct anyone. Right. And what we want is the administration to let go of that power and to start being more included in the business of defending free education of the Cooper Union, which it needs it. And everyone needs to hear what that is about. But. The, the terms that are being used right now by the administration are so general, so like so out of like context within the history of the Cooper Union, that when someone hears it, it's just like, this is not vision, this is just someone's, you know, take on, on something. And, and the way that, like, Jamshed has used the history of Cooper Union has been more for political reasons, to keep your power and to keep your administration working as it is, rather than to actually mobilize the whole community, which is not leadership, that is politics. So, uh, That's your opinion, so I don't think so. Exactly. I, I mean, well, we're, we're Cooper's original documents every day, and uh, I would love to discuss them with you, but I'd like to discuss... No, I don't want to speak of the history, well, it doesn't, doesn't I want to speak of how to, how to, how to mobilize a community. And you have not about look, it's a different so world. Peter, Peter the Cooper... The not going to solve this problem. What? The narrative, like the narrative. Yeah, I mean, Peter so, Cooper so was in the to Oliver's question. No, I let me I keep this on. No, no. Peter Cooper lived in a different world. I mean, I was I was watching MSNBC this morning, and or and they were talking about the gay rights issue, and the person uh, was saying that the world is changing because the people 25 and under they don't see gay this is an issue at all. Of of, of, of same-sex marriage. It's a non-issue for that group of people. To the people on the Supreme Court who are 70, it's a completely different issue, and by some miracle, five of them voted for, for uh, to, to, to allow it. So, at the same time, what he was saying was, but he was saying, and keep in mind, 20 years from now, because there was some newspaper, he says, there's not gonna be any newspaper. You know, I mean, since you're, you're, there will, no one's gonna, there will be no newspaper. I'm not the world saying, is changing. I know, I, I it's understand that. I'm not saying, for the better. I'm not saying we, 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 we have to be like, like Peter like Cooper's he, time or act like, like he that. he said, you know, the thing in, in, uh, in Texas on, where that woman stood for 11 hours filibustering. Mm -hmm. Well, why do you think the gallery filled up with all of her supporters? Because people went out on Facebook and said, so and so, we've got to get, Hurry, drop what you're doing, get to the state house. So at the end of the day, they back. couldn't even okay. conduct business because the, the, the audience was all supporters of hers. Well, ordinarily, no one would have known she was doing it. Maybe you would have read it in the newspaper the next day. And meanwhile, they would have passed the bill because, you know what I mean? So it's a different world where you so can my, energize my, my, thousands of people with one, you know, like I was I was in, in Africa with, with my grandchildren, so my oldest one is, is 18 
So a lion comes up to us from where you are, and 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 she takes a picture of the lion, and she pushes a button, and what's that thing? Instagram, instant, and she sends that picture of a lion to everybody all over the world. It's it's beyond comprehension. I'm saying, what did you just do? She says, I just sent that picture to everyone I know. Well, you know, it's a different world. That's a per that's a perfect. Pictures that the administration have this, have been taken has been taken of the Cooper Union are very demoralizing for the community. And what we want to do is we want to open up the way we to take do. pictures of the Cooper Union so that everyone can see that do it. it is I'm on your side. We need their help. I'm on your side. I'm telling you. Am I right? Did I vote against charging tuition? Absolutely. I'm just telling you. But a majority of we people. need solutions. We need solutions. Yeah, I vote. Uh, it was more symbolic than saying I had the solution. Join in fundraising. We should fundraise. And if you feel there are foundations that uh, haven't been approached, or haven't been approached the right way, let's go to them. I've actually. Well, that's something that I'm curious about. Sure. Like when you were talking about the relationship with between donors and recipients and the intersection of interests. Um, which which foundations do you feel are closest to the agenda of Cooper? Uh, I'll tell you. Um, most of the largest foundations who give the largest amounts of money have, as I said, proactive agendas. The ones uh, who have a proactive agenda that's related to education are almost uh, all focused on um, K through 12 public education and on scholarships and financial aid for those who are associated not only to uh, the least fortunate. So if you know all foundations that would have uh, the education for all as a priority, we, we work, you know, we stand and do research on all uh, the foundations. If you know some, let me know, we'll go together. But I'm just telling you that the agenda is a progressive agenda, and the progressive agenda is to find funding for those who are the least fortunate uh, because society, because those who are fortunate financially and in other ways uh, um, are expected to contribute. That's a progressive agenda even in contemporary politics. You know, the, the rich pay more taxes and so those who are less so can have a safety net, a social safety net. And, uh, um, even the, you know, the Soros's and the um, individual foundations that are based on living individuals well, as opposed to uh, Rockefeller and Carnegie, which are based on the uh, have those progressive agendas. They are, they are concerned mostly with, uh, first of all, societal problems like Climate change, environment, disease, healthcare, and uh, poverty eradication, um, and enabling uh, those who don't have access to, the schools, uh, to get the kind of education uh, in the in the area of uh, transition from from public K through 12 to college. Uh, the big focus is on college readiness, which is why the Saturday program and the outreach program are so important because the in the progressive agenda there's a there is a the, the data are showing more and more that merit uh, at the college level is highly correlated with socioeconomic status. The, the parents who can afford to send their kids to camps and art schools and this and SAT prep have a huge leg up, and so the foundations and donors are, are very much focused in what can we do in K through 12 or in even pre-K to to get uh, kids, more and more kids who, who aren't on a sort of a college track, to be on a college track, and that's why I applaud Jeff's gift to the Saturday program because that's the Saturday that's outreach program. That's why I say. To, to go into the public schools, inner city public schools, where many of the kids we never have had a chance to get this kind of, to prepare the kind of portfolio that you need to apply to the school by Cooper, 
You, you know, it's interesting. Gene Lang started I Have a Dream and the Lang College. But until he came along, there was almost no effort being done by, by, by industry by what, to get these kids an education. It was off the radar. Nobody focused on it. And, and Gene is the first one, because I met with the guys who do the uh, uh, charter schools. Because the charter schools is the flavor of the month, really, with Wall Street. Wall Street guys have all the money. But if you like it or not, that's what I'm doing. And the KIPP schools is, is one of the best. They're actually tenants of mine. So I met with the founder of the KIPP school. And he said to me, he said, you know, that Gene Lang is the father of the charter school movement. I said, really? Why do you say that? Because nobody was focused on the fact that these kids weren't getting an education. It was just, you know, wasn't in, in the public consciousness until Gene came along, got on 60 Minutes, and all of a sudden uh, people became enamored of this charter school concept. So, but and, can, and you got, can you have two seconds? Because I got to go. I want to talk to the project. Oh, sure. All right. Because we need to come up with something. Otherwise, sure. we're wasting. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Give me one second. You're going back? You have to go? No, yeah, but I'm going to come back. I, just I can to stay for another five minutes. Is yeah, it me too. Am I but coming back? Or yeah, I, I, let's, let's talk. I want to, I have an idea. Okay. Thank you. Be right back. What? Um, I obviously. But I don't know. I also think that like, there's a thing over there. What? Robert. Not Robert. Uh, Michael. So. Michael's conversation about. Oh. Okay. And also. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Cut to the chase. All right. Do you get your people together today, this afternoon? Yeah. And meet we, and we'll, and we tomorrow and try, we'll to, people. And try to bring this we'll up and try to see if we can come up with a compromise? We don't have a. It's not like that. It's just like the bodies are. I don't see the rush either, because the uh, rush decisions Especially aren't necessarily the smartest decisions. It would, I mean, honestly, it would just like, Do you like see? a lot of conversation around this would be What? Would you be willing to meet at some point before you leave with a large group of people? Actually, we're tomorrow. tomorrow. I could be tomorrow as well. Really, tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow, but after that, I'll you the house tomorrow. Yeah. And, and I'll be gone to leave my parents and my wife's mother for How long are you leaving for? A week. And, a week. Uh, a week. Uh, so I'm uh, meeting tomorrow with some more people and then a week at least talk about it. Well, if you need an answer. If, if there's a larger group, uh, I'd be willing to have a meeting if it's at another location. Because uh, I... Tom, we would like to know that we're making progress here. Okay, we don't want he doesn't want to go away and just leave this hanging. I think we're making progress, but I, this is my first effort at this. He's been trying his best. Um, I think if we, if we all feel that we're making progress, then maybe we can come up with a plan. Need a week we later. Have, or something. We can have a meeting tomorrow at a mutual location. Uh, not with a hundred people. I'll be there. I'll cancel whatever I have to do. And yes. we will need to have some kind of good faith agreement tomorrow. Alright. Everybody's going to be going away, but I'm going to do it. Tomorrow's already fine. Yes. Uh, and the building is closed. Um, so you're, you're going for a weekend. How long are you going for? Well, I'm, I'm in touch, but uh, my parents are declining, and I'm going to stay and spend uh, about a week with them. And my mother-in-law has just, just been uh, lost her husband, and has been uh, remaining time. Obviously, I'm in contact, and if something comes up, I'll be on. But I think on a plane or whatever. You would like. Uh, we would like to know that we're making progress. I think you, uh, 
He's more skeptical than I am. You I have. think we are making progress. I'm sorry, progress, but what is the goal? To a compromise. The goal is to come up with a compromise. We're not prepared to do what you would, what you would like us to do, which is hope the furthest for a year. My proposal would be that Mike and I would take, take this process over and we would come up with a plan to give you guys representation on the board and work well, with you. Well, that, that decision's been made, but we haven't done the fine-tuning of it. We would discuss the fine-tuning of it with, with, with you guys and, and we would have you as part of the process and that we would set a deadline of December 1st or it could be a week right maybe before Thanksgiving or something. December 1st to make a decision whether that class gets... To make a recommendation to the board and say this is what we have come up with. We have concluded that... Well, well this is what it would take. This is what it would take to keep this school free. We've got an agreement with the unions to do this. We've got an agreement with the students to, to try to help raise money. We think we, you know, Jeff has agreed to make another donation. Maybe we reach out to some of his friends and say we've got it. But it would all be part and parcel of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a game plan to, to keep the school tuition free. Or we come back and say it's absolutely impossible to keep the school free. And if the students don't like it, then it is what it is. Or maybe we come back and say, we think we could keep the art school and the architecture school free, but we can't keep the engineering school free. And this is another proposal, or maybe we come back and say, if we can raise you know, $10 million in the next, by uh, you know, March or something, we would, use, we would look at that as a, a gesture of good faith on the part of the Cooper community, and we would agree to defer for another year the, the decision and we would work together to try to raise more money. I don't know the solution. I haven't, I haven't you know, made this my life's work. Um, <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, but, but Jamshed wants to leave here tomorrow with, with, the, with a, a, a feeling that we've made real progress and that there's at least a reasonable chance that when we get back together in a week, when we all are back, that we'll be able to come up with a solution. That doesn't mean that we will, but that at least there's good faith on the part of, of both sides. That's, that's it in a nutshell. He would like to meet in a neutral place. I don't know where a neutral place is. Is there plenty of neutral places? Okay. Uh, let me just uh, mm -hmm. say something about the meeting. The conference room. <laughs> we haven't identified that yet. It's precisely, <laughs> yeah, precisely, yeah. Um, and uh, I think that uh, just want to let you know there uh, already is an ongoing effort to, and I think it should happen continuously find ways uh, to go back to the free, to find ways to increase the percentage of scholarship. Uh, and the, the reason why the board made the decision that it did is the numbers are pretty stark. And I believe since, since the reports from the 60s onward, certainly with the analyses we have done, given the fact that we have no more assets to sell. Um, the choice has been the closure of the school or more versus charging. And it's a draconian, it's a terrible choice. It's a terrible choice. I have, I believe, to this day, I've been brutally honest, as is necessary, to tell you that that has been the choice. Uh, I would love to have said that uh, I didn't think those were the choices, but you know, I, I know the numbers, and they are absolutely staggering. Uh, the, uh, the, the, there is a, there was discussion by the board about downsizing. There was a lot of discussion about downsizing, and there, uh, there's no, uh, in our view, certainly in my view, having work with the numbers, there's no downsizing option that solves the problem short of closing down the schools. I do not want to do 
you, I don't believe in humanity. Uh, and uh, to the extent that budget cuts might produce some savings, which obviously budget cuts would produce some savings, uh, there's no way to get to 12 million on a sustained basis without some of these new programs, the, the so-called hybrid model. Uh, the new programs, uh, I, from the very start, felt that that was uh, an important thing to look at even before I came to the board. When I was having discussions with the board, I suggested we can look at summer programs and master's programs. In fact, there's an interview that's online somewhere which is completely misquoted out of context where I talk about uh, revenue generating programs and uh, that, those were master's programs and summer programs to try and leverage, put the facility to maximum use uh, in the summers in particular and at nights, continuing education to, to uh, launch academic programs that are academically exciting and uh, that help solve our problem. So they, they, there is one kind of framework that the board did look at where if you have a combination of some pretty draconian cuts uh, that would require lots and lots of, uh, you know, cutting a lot of, a lot of uh, highly valued things and programs, but preserving free tuition for the undergraduate programs and maximizing the uh, success of some of these new master's programs or summer programs uh, um, that you know we continue to look at, but it, it assumes that there is community support for these new programs, uh, and it assumes because if you want to recruit master students or you want to recruit summer students, uh, you know they would want to come into an environment in which there is support for that model. Uh, there's been a lot of opposition to that model, uh, and I, I think architecture is well on its way. I think the faculty are very strongly behind that model, and I believe they will be successful, and they can probably uh, 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 move uh, maybe faster than the other schools to close that gap and, and increase the scholarships. Uh, engineering. There's a tremendous amount of competition in New York for masters and some of the programs with other institutions and Cornell and, and uh, Technion now with a big partnership uh, with Google and so on and so forth. So uh, we can't assume that these new programs are going to be able to close the gap. Uh, and the board made the decision it did because it in the end concluded that while these new programs will close some of the gap, and without them the tuition would have to be even higher, they don't go to close the entire gap, even with uh, some significant budget cuts. And uh, we're certainly, you know, we have said, and I told the Senate, that the board is working on a more detailed report. What the board announced was a, just a short announcement as a way of just saying, you know, not, not waiting. But there are a lot of uh, documents that are financial, historical financial documents. Some of you probably have found right on the shelf going back 40 to 45 years. We want to share those. Uh, I think the, uh, even with uh, a, an understanding such as Jeff uh, is proposing, I think we would have to go into it uh, knowing that uh, this is extremely daunting. And uh, I do agree that one can get out of this through fundraising, but that's been a kind of a fundraising response that uh, the institution didn't see in the 1990s when it was announced publicly that Cooper had five years left. And so in some sense, the experiment was done. With five years of survival uh, to maintain Cooper as being tuition free, tuition was not put on the table as a uh, alternative, there wasn't a mobilization, there wasn't a response, the capital campaign uh, did fall short, and uh, I was interested, Oliver, in what you were saying, you were saying, that, oh, some of them, now we're mobilized. Why would you think you're mobilized now, as opposed to when the crisis in the 90s? Is it because tuition is a possibility? But then that's that's an interesting observation. I was talking because I was maligned putting tuition on the table. 
And now it seems to me you're saying, now that people realize it might actually be a reality, maybe they're mobilized. So well, if, I mean, if, that, if that's what it took to mobilize them, I'll join you and we will do whatever we can to raise the money, but it's a $300 million new endowment over and above what the prospect research suggests we can raise. So Which would be 130. 130, which is a conservative number, but this past year, last year we raised 9.7. It's a lot of money. This year we're coming close to the 10 million mark. It's a very successful fundraising year. Our our plan calls for wrapping that up to 13 million a year over 10 years. It will be 130 million. In order, this 12 million dollar deficit is over and above that, which means in addition to the 12, 13 million, we have to raise 12 million a year of Expendable funding, mm -hmm. not endowment funding, expendable funding, which would be. Um, I I'd love to try, but I'd be dishonest if I said, and nobody who's raised 100 million or more uh, would say that it's something you can, you can commit to without uh, risking the bankruptcy. Of the so the but logic it's, is. It's worth trying. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to get that all in one shot, that's a $300 million number. Because you only are supposed to spend 5%. Right. Okay. Roughly three, you know, 12 million times 20, 25, whatever it is. 15 million per year. Per year. I'm sorry, but would nobody just raise $100 million or more, sir? That you can go from 12, from uh, the 13 million a year that our prospect research shows we can do over the next 10 more years to that plus 12 million a year, which would be 25 million per year. Particular, so that would be almost a 100% increase that's sustained. Furthermore, the 9.7 raised last year, this is why detail and complexity are important. I know people say you're obfuscating, but you're artists, you, you understand complexity in your art, you understand detail in your art that other people may not be able to understand. There is a tremendous amount of detail in finance, and that's where the reality lies. Of the 9.7 million raised last year, only 3 million was expendable funds that you can actually go towards balancing the budget. And that's typical of any capital campaign, typical of funding uh, at any nonprofit, where roughly two thirds comes in the form of endowment giving uh, or capital giving, giving for specific projects. So Diane Lewis is doing a specific project, a book project, and we raise money from from uh, the year to fund the project, so it's money in, money out for a project. It doesn't help the the, the budget. So most of the so all the expendable amount of that 9.7 was only three million. Now the 12 million that we need, it has to be expendable. We have to actually put it towards the budget. So then we're already talking about going from three million to three plus 12 is 15 million in expendable funding, which is a 500 percent increase. Nobody who raised this kind of money believes that that would be anything other than suicide. I understand the importance of grabbing onto an ideal and saying, let's go and let's do it. But I also believe that that, that has it got the institution into the trouble that it's been in because it has tried that for 45 years. And we are on the verge of collapse. Uh, so, so what do we do? <laughs> I mean, no, what I'm saying is if you guys want to meet tomorrow, if people want to you know, if raise additional money, let's arrange for well, more than just raising additional funds. money. There's got to be cuts, there's got to be other things. It's not just yeah. raising additional money. Can you leave your email with us? Is that all right? What? I'd like to also suggest that, because um, I, don't, I don't know if you know like the things that we have been planning um, for the next couple sure. months, and I think that they are compatible with what you suggested. Um, and so if you could bring like some sort of written proposal, and then we could also give you like something of a plan because if you want to take if you're taking a vacation with you should like we can also be working on things during that time well and i think I well think john Chet's position is i i i, I, I don't uh i, I feel um he wants all due respect you you made a tremendous point you've, you've shown tremendous passion i want to thank you for that you're all amazingly talented i know that um uh, you you can claim successes student representation. I am pledging to work to raise as much money as we can if we can exceed the goals that uh, are stipulated by our prospect research. To the extent we can exceed the goals, we can increase the scholarships. 
And if we can exceed it to the extent that eliminates the deficit, we will go back to the free. But I need to ask you to leave the office. You are trespassing. You are violating the code of conduct. Uh, uh, you remove the doors uh, and you remove the people who the portrait. Uh, there is a code of conduct was voted on by students. Uh, it was recommended to the board by students. The judicial process was recommended by students on the understanding that students would apply. And uh, I think that uh, we pledge in good faith to constantly, continuously look at ways to return to you free, particularly if you want to join me in fundraising, come with me. Uh, I'll give you the floor to make your pitch if you build foundations and donors. Uh, but, uh, I think we have to, uh, I agree, we have to work together. And the occupation is hurting. Uh, some donors uh, are holding back. Then how are you portraying the occupation to those donors? I, I don't <laughs> portray it. I, mean, I, I say what I've said in, in the media, I, you know, there's a lot of passion. Mm -hmm. uh, and our students are very passionate. And it's wonderful that they're passionate. And, uh, I know you all uh, have the best of intentions, and, and uh, uh, I, I think as an institution of higher education, we should uh, voice our differences around our table according to the codes of conduct that the community has arrived at and according to the laws uh, of the city in which we live. We are of the city, the city is our campus, Code of Conduct also says we're bound by the laws of the city. The building is closed uh, uh, after hours. This, this office is, is uh, and uh, the, the, the staff are under tremendous amount of pressure, tremendous amount of pressure. Our, our maintenance staff uh, are uh, bursting at the seams. They are the 99%, truly. And, 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 and they look and see we never had anywhere close to the opportunity to have this kind of education, let alone be free. There, there, there's tremendous pressure, the bursting at the seams. Uh, I know you don't like the presence of security guards, but they're also part of the 99%. And I think you know, there should be uh, consideration given to, uh, to this. We need to continue the work of the institution and to uh, So uh, we can, we can uh, if, if you want uh, to convene a group, if you want to convene a group, uh, um, for me it would have to be in the afternoon. We're thinking about 7 p.m. No, I can't. Tomorrow night I can't do it. No, because you've got to take my leave. Yeah. So what time in the afternoon, Jack? Well, I, I don't. I had a rearrange some things. Seven meters. Seven meters. Seven meters. Seven meters. Gloria is still out, by the way. She had to have an MRI. Two MRIs on her shoulder. Uh, I, I think that uh, you can declare victory. You have achieved a tremendous amount. You've got a good representation throughout the institution of the lives. We are pledging to work in the way that Jeff has suggested. And let's let's see if we can uh, uh, agree on that. Not at this moment. What? Not at this moment. Well, do you want to see if we can, I mean, if we can get a meeting tomorrow, uh, we'll have a meeting tomorrow. And, uh, I'm hearing you were saying uh, when? I can meet at three. From three to five. It's back to that thing. And what's um, what's the latest you'd like to hear back on that tonight? About a meeting tomorrow? Yeah. I don't care. 
Okay. Well, at a reasonable if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not meeting with you, I'm leaving early. Okay, good. Cool. Right, so when do you plan to leave, or when is the latest you can leave? No, we have five. Okay, so. Three weeks. Okay. Three weeks. Three Okay. They. Can you do it midday? Because I have uh, doctor's appointment in the morning, then I have a few hours midday, and then we we'll start to head off to see Well, if there's a risk of making it excessively mm -hmm. haphazard, if there's, just, if there's a risk of making it so haphazard, why don't we just wait until the week after both of you get back? Well, we need to be working on it. I mean, okay. uh, I, know, I know I've read your statement about mediation. Uh, I believe. That would have been extremely beneficial. It was an interesting idea. They are, uh, you know, they, they teach it at a top law school. They, they part of the teaching of it is that it's it's neutral, it's unbiased. In, in mediation carried out at the highest levels, neither party is satisfied with the outcome uh, because they have to be compromised. I do believe it would have been an extremely powerful and productive and in much of an intensive process in which we would all have learned uh, a lot uh, from the listening process, from the process of trying to find a common ground, uh, which is how mediation goes. We don't disagree but, about the value yeah. of mediation, as we said in my response. I think all the things you're saying, like, potentially true, it was just, it was all the things we enumerated in our response that turned us off. Like, perhaps, if you would like to plan to coordinate mediation for this next meeting, we could talk about that now, as long as we're talking about it together. No, maybe not now, but like we could talk about that. Sure, but uh, I'd in, rather in, talk directly. In your in your response, you complained that we didn't announce our team until two of the days had gone by. The reason we didn't is we didn't want to have those decisions made until we met with you. So in yes, a sense, many other were made before that. Right? Right? Pardon? Does it? Yeah. Many other decisions were made before that one. It was just. I actually think uh, Je Jeff's uh, motivation to come here as a board member and someone who can actually make decisions and talk to the board is more valuable than having some mediator who has nothing to do with it. Actually, when, when Mike came in uh, in the middle of May, he was able to explain some things as well that were not communicated well before that. So that was, I mean, it's a useful protocol, I think. But. So if we can find a time tomorrow. I could. Uh, we, we, I mean, I could, the thing I about. I gotta change this around. If, if I mean, you want to meet in the middle of the day, you, I can you need to have a send me an decision email. making process that where you can. Uh, he wants to know. We're not gonna know tomorrow. There's just no. No, we didn't say that. He wants to know that that there, that, that it appears that there's a, a, a window of opportunity to make a deal, mm -hmm. and if there isn't, then. There is, I, think I think that I window think of opportunity we, depends on how, how many changes you well, want I to do. Well, I thought I made a very reasonable proposal, to be honest with you. If you yeah, want yeah. my advice, you should mm -hmm. take it. Because mm -hmm. I'm a sincere person, and I'm giving you an out. I'm giving him an out and you an out. I'm basically telling you that I'm committing to, to working with Mike mm -hmm. to find a solution that would be tuition free, and that, that I am prepared to have that report finished by December 1st. And that simultaneously I'm prepared to negotiate with the board as a middleman of, of how to provide student representation for that December board meeting. So, or another meet, another form. So, you want my advice? I made a very fair proposal. I haven't been involved in this for a long time. You want to spend the summer here? Life's too short. I, I, I would be happy not to do it and let the thing fall apart because it's going to fall apart. I disagree with him. I think that, that the Cooper Union is going to fall apart. That's my opinion. Now others don't agree with you, but that's my opinion. I wish that was not the case, but I well, think, but I think it was falling apart. It was falling apart, and I think I don't think we've solved it. By exactly. I don't think the solution we've come up with is going to be the, is going to save the day. No, it's not a solution. We need. I would now maybe that. That there isn't another solution, and then we have to convince the Cooper community that we gave, that we that there isn't that we gave it our best shot. Maybe these same faculty people who are saying, "Oh, we would cut our salary," we would maybe they're full of shit. I have no idea, but we're going to find out. 
and, and I wrote a check for a million dollars, I'm prepared to write another check if need be, if that helps. It, it, it's part of part and parcel of a, of a solution. If you want my honest opinion, I'm very, I'm disappointed that what I proposed, you know, either you think I'm a legit guy or, or not. Mike and I feel, I'm on your side. I could be sitting here if I was 20, but I'm 70, so I'm not sitting here. Wait, I'm sorry, You can you complete the thought of like, um, this, this is something I proposed, and then you said, do you think I'm a legit, legit guy? Because what but I'm, I'm saying to, to you is, thought. I'm telling I you, forget. I just okay. don't understand what you're trying to say. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, Godfrey. What I'm saying is that I think you should take me at my word, and I'm going to try to find a solution. 